Hello. Watch again. Addition of Hassan, Sahaku Tam, the Kashashan Ishku, Mahigan Dodam, or Mashkiko. I just said hello. My name is Shadow Hawk Woman. That's my traditional name. I'm Wolf Clan, and my ancestry hails from Attawa, Biscot. So I'd like to say a couple of things today. Happy spring, and what the heck is going on? It's like, you know, there's been so much emphasis put on getting back to the university and uh, being excited about spring, that I think we are excited about both of those things, but both of those things cause us to pause and look. You know, one of the things that I'm noticing with people I'm hearing and feeling myself is kind of this internal conundrum that I've created, this internal conflict that has been created for us around, now we are to embrace all that we've been taught to fear for the last two years. So how do we do that? Well, we think, oh, this will be great. And then we start thinking about, oh, traveling on TTC, you know, but what about meetings? What about this? What about that? I got comfortable at home. And, and now I have to think about coming back into the office and how comfortable I am I with that? And am I supposed to be excited? I should be more excited than what I'm really feeling. I shouldn't be feeling dread. This is a move forward. I should be happy with this. It's spring. It's time to get out. But am I really comfortable getting out there and going out and meeting with people with my masks off? Like, really? So once again, we have this internal conflict of excitement versus fear. And I think what's important for us to remember is they are going to go hand in hand and that's as it will be because we're all excited about trying to get back to some sort of normalcy about getting out there and, and seeing friends and family again and laughing and just sharing our time and our energies and our thoughts with people and at the same time in the back of our mind is it really safe yet and all we can do, and once again, I keep saying this, but I'm going to say it again, is practice our own personal PPE. If you don't feel comfortable, then don't. If you don't feel comfortable sitting with people with, a, with their masks off, keep yours on. You know, there's no formula, <clears throat> excuse me, even though we may be trying to find a formula, there's no magic formula for how we do any of this. Because it's been such a transition from one thing to another. But what I do know for sure works is where we focus our energy, where we focus our thoughts. And those fears are natural and normal and come to the surface to help us really assess things well. But a lot of these fears, F-E-A-R fears are false evidence appearing real. And those fears are silenced by the truth. So, oh my God, this gun, what about, what about, and we're always worrying about what other people are doing. Just remind yourself, not your circus, not your monkeys. You don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing. Take care of yourself, keep yourself protected. You know, do all the things that you need to do as we ease in to this coming back into our outside world, the world around us. No, I've equated it to, you know, we'd all like to jump in, but it actually it's a big cold lake that we got to walk in and have to tippy toe in. First our toes and our ankles and then backs of our knees and then, you know, below our waist when that hits the water, that's the worst part. And then we walk out a little bit further than we can dive in. But that's a process. That's a process of dealing with kind of the shocks and the realities of, you know, doing this again. You know, are the rocks slippery? Have I got my footing? And really what you need to do is give yourself time to adjust, you know, come in, maybe coming in for a full day is too much. Maybe at the beginning, you know, you're not going to ride the TTC in when everybody else is coming in. Maybe you're going to wait and arrive an hour later and, you know, go home an hour earlier and do that extra two hours at home or whatever it is you need to do. Find a way to make the scheduling that you want to have happen work for you. And until we get some more trust and more level of comfort about moving about in our world freely again, we can't expect this to just come off in a shower in the morning and, and disappear with work clothes that we put on and head into the office. That's not going to happen. It's too convoluted. It's too mixed message. So please be kind with yourself. Be gentle with yourself as you 
wander back and forth and you're going to come to work and you're going to miss the comforts of being at home and next to your fridge and your coffee pot and the dogs and whatever and just being in an environment that's safe and you know it's safe it's a transition please talk to other people about what you're feeling don't sit with it quietly because if you're thinking it you can bet that other people are thinking it too and sometimes you know we can come together in groups and have conversations and work our th- our way through all the gobbledygook to get around to reminding ourselves of what our focus is and that's taking care of ourselves doing what we got to do from day to day and it's an assessment you know i have fibromyalgia i have um, arthritis <clears throat> And there's been lots of times when I went into work when I really was not able to go to work. This was before the pandemic. And it was just so excruciatingly uncomfortable, but I didn't want to tell people that I was dealing with this. Well, now I'm more than comfortable with having accommodations because I need accommodations and there's nothing wrong with accommodations. That's why we have policies and procedures and all kinds of things around accommodations. So I'm sure that your manager will work with you in whatever accommodation you may may need so that you can get back to the university feeling comfortable. And that isn't gonna happen because somebody says it should happen. It's gonna happen with the process. Once again, I think one of the most important tools that I've ever uh, been taught to use or been told to use was journaling. And it doesn't have to be in a formal journal. It could be on a piece of paper, just writing your thoughts down any of those fears that are rumbling around in your head, any of the things that you're, that you're worrying about, jot them down on paper. It doesn't get rid of them, but it gets them out of floating around in your head and getting in your way during the day. And once you write them on paper, you're actually grounding those thoughts so that you can come back to them later. Please expect that there is going to be a new level of exhaustion that you haven't felt in a while because we have forgotten what it feels like to be around a whole lot of other humans. There's a whole energy that we all spew off that we, you know, and we've, before we learned to block that, kind of zone in on our own stuff, put our earbuds in and just focus. We can't do that now because we have to adjust. So I hear people talking about going into work for half a day and coming home and just being exhausted and have to sleep. Very normal. Just don't put any expectations on yourself unless there's short, small increments of time that you know you could do without any issue. This is a fact-finding mission once again. And how am I going to get back into the workforce? How is this going to look for me? And like anything else, this is a very organic process. So it's going to evolve. You may think from this position that you're going to have these concerns. But you may find out that once you get in there, maybe you have those concerns, maybe you have those concerns and more, or maybe you don't have as many of those concerns, or maybe now you have some new concerns. So just get comfortable with adjustment. This is an adjustment phase. The other really important thing to hang on to, and I've talked about this before, is we've made it. All of us are here. We've made it. Unfortunately, a lot of us have had loss of loved ones, including our fur babies, as well as our humans. And there's a lot of grief to this. And a lot of us will be moving forward without some loved ones at our side, but they're still with us in spirit. And it's really important that we hang on to that fact. Now, the other part of this conversation I wanna talk about is spring. And spring, uh, we just, uh, I did a spring equinox ceremony, had a great turnout for it. Uh, Spring is the time, you know, the equinox, the day of the equinox is an equal balance between day and light, day and night. Same thing, only different. (laughs) And it reminds us that it is time once again to waken up and find our balance after resting. Wintertime is a time for most people of less activity, of doing more uh, different activities. So 
it's also adjustment to let go of that and to come into spring. Spring is the time when Indigenous people would have come together from various communities to plan what we needed to do around hunting, gathering, farming, whatever it was, to meet the new needs of our communities. And that's what we will be doing in Ryerson. We will be coming together and having meetings and meeting the needs of, the, of our Ryerson community. So spring is also the time to prepare the ground for seeds and for things that will grow. And so every thought, every action are seeds. Every time we do something, we're planting a seed. So there's lots of seed preparation and, and like seeds. I want you to remember this, it kind of ties into the first part of the conversation. You may want flowers. You may want to go back to work. You may want flowers, but you have to plant the seeds for the flowers. You have to plant the seeds for going back to work. And like the seeds, it grows. And there's a Buddha saying that most of the work is done in the dark when the seed sprouts and uh, must do the hard journey of breaking through the earth to be revealed and continue to grow. So the seeds that we're planting and the work that we're going to be doing until we get our footing back at work is about all the growth that that seed will be doing underground as we kind of work our way through the stuff that we need to do, work our way through as we continue to find a new norm. We're not going back to the old norm. Life doesn't come with an eraser. We can't rub what we've experienced, what we've learned, and what we've lived through out of our lives. It's forever changed us. And how that will look in the long term remains to be seen. Hopefully, I hope that we have learned from our time of confinement with self that we are far more complex, far more capable, and far more deserving than we ever realized. And so that we will continue to promote health care, mental health, as well as physical health. If the medical profession could step back for a moment and take a look, they would see if they invested more time, more money in mental health, they would probably have a lot less physical health issues because those two are very correlated. And I know a lot of you have learned that over the course of your time in confinement with COVID. So plant those seeds, think about where you wanna go, do them short-term right now, don't have long-term goals. Gradually increase what you can do in increments that you can handle them. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Everybody has their own lens that they're looking through. And we've been looking through a trauma, fear-induced lens for two years. So it's gonna take time for that to kind of settle down, for us to have faith in ourselves, to be able to handle whatever comes in front of us, and the faith in our system to get back to working, faith, faith in our communities, and faith, faith in our bigger community of Toronto and the GTA that we are going to get back to a place of being able to embrace our life, enjoy our life, and look to the future in a way that we haven't been able to do for the last two years. So once again, my message is and will always be to take care of yourself. Remember that you are an important integral part of the symbiotic relationship we have with our environment, with our universe. We need you, we need your thoughts, we need what you give, and we need you to feel happy about what it is you're doing in your, in your work and in your walk on this earth. If you take care of yourself, then you can be there 100% for other people. If you don't take care of yourself, if you put off your self-care to the end of the day, you're probably not gonna do it. So this is very simple, not meant to offend but I want you to get into the habit that every time you go to the bathroom during the day, when you're by yourself, you can ask yourself, how am I emotionally feeling right now? And just learn to get in touch with your feelings because that's your authentic self. That's the part that gets ignored. And if we've learned anything from this pandemic, it's the part we need to finally pay attention to as a community at large. 
there are going to be rough times ahead. Hey, nobody ever, ever said it was going to be an easy walk. It isn't. But we're all capable. And we all have the ability to get through difficult times. And the proof is in the pudding. I look forward to talking to you again. I am really thrilled that I get the opportunity to share my thoughts. That's just my thoughts. I'm just an old gal who's learned a lot of ways to go through various problems. And I'm hoping I can shine some light and just let you know that you're, you're not alone in whatever you're thinking and feeling and that you are very important. Thank you very much for listening again. And until we meet again next time, I say, Chimi Gwich, Chimi Gwich, Chimi Gwich, Chimi Gwich. Oh, all my relations. Hi, hi. Thank you.